We've all seen these little toy gizmos that demonstrate lightning in a bottle. It's the electric phenomenon called plasma discharge. Various inventors, working independently, are coming up with some exotic combinations of gases, metals, and processes to actually squeeze excess electrical energy out of this phenomenon of nature. In 1996, Paolo and Alexandra Correa received the first patent for such a device called the Pulsed Abnormal Glow Discharge Reactor, the first of its kind to convert plasma discharge directly into electricity. This is a standard. Utah inventor Paul Pantone has developed what he calls the GEET fuel processor, a plasma generator similar to a super carburetor that actually appears to run on 80% water and is entirely non-polluting. This device replaces the carburetor and exhaust and combines them as one unit, whereas this end of it acts as a miniature refinery, allowing the engine to run on everything from battery acid and water mixed to crude oil right out of the ground. This is Angola crude, 39.5 gravity. The exhaust coming down goes around and comes out here at the far end. The center chamber draws some of the heat from the exhaust, plus this tube takes some of the exhaust gases, takes them up into the chamber, and bubbles them down to the bottom. The bubbles, as it comes through the fuel, are brought up to the top of the chamber, picked up through a tube, and fed up the center of the exhaust pipe. While they're being fed up the exhaust pipe, they are in a vacuum, and there's a heat exchange which occurs. This process has been argument, argued a few times to be either a plasma field, an electro field. We do know that it does have a slight radiation, which is not alpha, beta, or gamma. And we do have x-rays to show that whatever is coming from the unit does get affected different from stainless steel than uh, the regular steel. Yep. When the temperature of the exhaust is the same as the air temperature going in from the air portion up here, normally one, three percent more oxygen coming out of the tailpipe than there is in the air we're breathing. No carbon at all. Carbon vanishes. I wouldn't say vanishes. I would say transmuted into some other substance, a lighter element, because we have an abundance of lighter elements here that are not explained from down here. But during the heat process, uh, there are molecular changes. After running this engine from 1983 until now, and many times we had it running eight, eight, eight and a half hours a day, uh, we have never had to change the spark plug change the oil, or clean it. We have taken the head off three times to inspect the inside of it, and it's been spotless. What we have here is the Pantone GEET device fitted to a Ford 2300cc four-cylinder engine. As you can see, we, had, we have a, a see-through container here, which holds the fuel. As the engine is started, Air is drawn in by vacuum through the fuel and bubbles the fuel, the vapors of which are drawn off here. They travel down this hose into our reaction chamber. They go up the reaction chamber and return back out here to be, intake, to be taken into the engine through this tube. This is our air filter, and this tube is connected to another valve, which are controlled by this linkage, operating the air intake and the fuel intake. This is the valve that controls the return air going through this tube into the bubbler.
Uh, during the testing with the 2300cc fitter, we have achieved efficiency up to and including 300% of normal. Uh, if this uh, engine normally got 20 miles to the gallon on the highway, uh, you'd now be looking at 60. Uh, our load tests and whatnot have not been completed, but we feel very confident that there's not going to be a, a power problem out there that wasn't in the I witnessed chamber. the uh, demonstrations so the process, by uh, Paul Pantone and I was astonished by the claim uh, of abil ability to use any uh, fuel or water including mixed with oil and so forth it's similar to something that's validated already by Gunnerman uh, that's uh, being used in the state of Nevada at the moment uh, however uh, this is an even more shocking claim uh, because it appears that it is Truly, if it's correct, and if it can be validated, he seems quite open, it appears that this may be yet another process which, are, which does some kind of transmutation of elements. He claims there's no carbon coming out of the exhaust, which is, would be unthinkable for putting a, a hydrocarbon fuel in, even if it's mixed with water. You have to get carbon out, and, and he's claiming that there are no... Uh, CO or CO2 emissions from this, and there appear to be none visually, uh, th that is, there appear to be no soot of particles coming out of the exhaust. So I hold out some hopes for this. So our demonstration units that will be going out to about 25,000 stations between now and the end of the year or early next year are being retrofit as we speak now to include our system in the exhaust pipe and our injector body here with standard equipment that normally is supplied from the factory so that we can get it out to the public as quickly as possible. Hopefully After being rejected by we'll dozens of U.S. manufacturers, Pantone now has contracts with several contract major as foreign as as countries. Possible. Recently, several now U.S. We'll companies have decided you know, to take a second look.